One of the very latest tools from SAP Business Objects is SAP Lumira. What is SAP Lumira? You may have heard of it as SAP Visual Intelligence. And it's a tool that enables, if you like, non-IT users to be able to quickly and easily access their data and build visualizations. So in previous demonstrations, I've shown you how we use interactive analytics. I've shown you how we use pervasive analytics to build our dashboards. This is another tool which you can use for building those dashboards, but it gives you a lot more options. So how does it work? Well, fundamentally, you start SAP Lumira and you tell the system that you wanna create a new document. Now, Lumira gives you a number of different choices for the kinds of data that you can access. And in this case, we're gonna access our SAP HANA Online. So I choose SAP HANA Online, and now it just asks me, well, specifically, which HANA server do you wanna to connect to? So I'm gonna to connect to my HANA server number two. So I put in here HANA two, and then I need to put in the port number for the connection. I put in my instance number and with SAP Business One version for HANA, that's usually instance 00. It asks me to authenticate on the basis of my database user. So I'll put in a database user and in this case, I'm gonna use my system user. Put in the password and then I say that I wanna connect. Now, if I get an error message, I need to go back and take a look. Did I put in all the right information? So let's go and double check. Yes, it's HANA2. Yes, I've got the right information there. And again, I'm gonna say connect. So what did I do wrong? In that particular instance, I put in the port number. And with SAP Lumira, you don't actually need to specify that. So that was a mistake on my part. Uh, what I now have is I have access to all of these different pieces of information. So remember I talked about our semantic layer. That's what I'm seeing here. But not only am I seeing the semantic layer that I was showing you before in one company database, I can now see all of the semantic layers in all the different company databases that I have to work with. But let's work with the same company, our demonstration company for our US localization. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna use my sales revenue semantic layer so I choose that and I'll say acquire. What that now does is that links me and connects me to that data and it's now scanning the data source. And you can see very much in a similar fashion to what we did with our interactive uh, analysis in the Excel spreadsheet and when we were building our pervasive analytics with our dashboard, we have measures, which are the values that you can select. You have dimensions, or what uh, Lumira calls hierarchies, and then you have these different attributes. So now, all I do is I say, what specifically am I interested in looking at? So remember, this is my revenue. So I go in here and I say, well, I'm interested in looking at the sales amount. So I can choose that, and I can take that, and I can put that as a measure on one of my axes. I can put it on my y-axis number one, or I could put it on my y-axis number two. So how this works is it's based purely on the kind of visualization that I choose. Am I looking at utilizing a bar, a bar chart, maybe a column chart, a stack column chart, whatever the case may be? Am I looking at a line graph? Am I looking at a pie chart? Really, it depends on the way those charts are designed to display information and where they can display multiple values, multiple dimensions, and so on and so forth. So the great thing with these tools is, the, and what I've found to be a really, really helpful, is you, once you're familiar with your semantic layer, you really just get a chance to start working with the data and playing with all the different charts to see the kind of different results that you can get. So there you go, there's my sales amount. Now I now wanna look at that by a particular dimension. So right now I've got all my sales. So if I wanted to look at that sales by item group, again, all I do is I select my item group and I drag that across here into my dimension. And you can now see I'm getting my sales by item group accessories, HP printers, IBM printers, 
like general items, PCs, servers, and so on. So it makes it very, very easy to take these, uh, to take these dimensions and drop them in here. And then if I wanted to, for example, let's say one of the other things I wanted to look at was um, by item group and then by customer group. Well, I can simply go in here and take my customer group and I can add that across here as another dimension. And now what am I seeing? I'm seeing my sales by item group, which is, you can see here, accessories, HP printers, item printers. And then this is being broken down by each one of my customer groups. Now, if I wanna swap those around again, very, very simple. Just change the order of those and what you'll see in the system is it will go ahead and it will change the way that that information is being presented to you. So another way of doing that is, for example, I might wanna look at this sales by customer group. So I simply can go here and I can add that information across or I can even right click on it and I can say add that to my current chart and now I'm looking at sales by customer group. Same scenario, I now wanna look at that by item group, right click and I add that to my current chart. And so now you can see each of my customer sales groups, construction, distribution, high tech, large accounts, and you can see how much of each of my different product groups I've actually sold. Now what I'm able to do now that I've got those dimensions and those measures in there, I can start playing around and say, okay, what does this look like if I use different graph types? What does it look like if I use a stacked bar chart or a column chart with two different uh, X axes? Or what does it look like if I wanna use a line chart? And you see it immediately changes that for me. Or what if I wanna use uh, a pie chart? Same scenario here. Or do I wanna use a pie chart with a variable slice depth? So again, you've got all these different uh, values all these different ways of representing those, um, those data points in all these different visual fashions. So again, uh, I can go in here and then I'm able to, if I want to, I can come back and I can start um, changing the information that I'm showing in this visualization. But then when I get it right, and I'm just gonna go back here, and I'm gonna change it back to my bar, my bar chart, what I can do is I can come in here and I can say save. And that is gonna go ahead and save it. Now it's gonna automatically save it with, uh, with a name based on the semantic layer. But in this case, I'll go in here and I'll say save as, cause I wanna change that slightly. So I wanna give it a more detailed name, something that's specific to what I want. So this will be sales by customer group by item group. And I can go in here and I can give it a description, just something a little bit more uh, verbiage, if you like, that helps people understand exactly what it is that they're looking at. And then I'll say save. And that's now saving my document. And then I can go in here and I can choose to share that document. And you can see here is my document and I'm able to take this visualization and depending on how I've got my backend system set up, I can share this out as a data set to HANA. I can publish it to SAP's collaboration tool called Streamwork. I can publish it out to the SAP Lumira Cloud, which is a way of taking your data and storing it securely in the cloud and making that available for other people inside your organization. Or I can even take this visualization and I can send it out to people by mail. So that's a quick look at SAP Lumira. And you can, of course, go and download uh, a free copy of SAP Lumira to trial uh, and work with that together with your SAP Business One on HANA data and see exactly how you can benefit by using SAP Lumira together with Business One.